Hey everyone, this is Kamran and in this lesson we are going to look at the DOM. We'll see what is the difference between the DOM, virtual DOM and the shadow DOM. And we'll also look at some practical examples to understand how the real world usage of these looks like. Here I have a simple HTML file. In the head we have a title set to what is DOM and in the body we have a simple H1 saying hello world. If you look at the browser you will see that we have the hello world printed here. But we just gave it the text. How is the browser able to render this in the form of this page? The browser does it with the help of a DOM. But what is DOM? DOM stands for Document Object Model and it is the in-memory representation of our HTML in the form of objects. So the DOM is just the node tree format. It looks like this. As you can see we have the multiple items of our HTML represented as nested nodes shown in the form of a tree. Open the console and put here document. You will see that we are getting the, our document object. Inside the document we have the head. We have our body. Inside the body we have the H1. I can put here also document.head to get our head element and if I put here document dot body we have our body element and inside the body we have the h1 and if you want to manipulate our objects so for example if I want to put the background on the body I can do that also so I'll do document dot body dot style dot background let's say blue and our blue background is applied on our body there are a bunch of methods in the document object which we can use also so let me first clear our browser state so I'll refresh and now if I do document dot query selector let's say that I get h1 you see that it is giving us the h1 and if I put here let's say style dot font size 92 pixel we are modifying the h1 state now all these methods and the props that we are using to manipulate our dom is called the dom api and it is important to note that this dom api is not the part of the javascript specification if i open the ecmascript language specification and search here qd selector all or qd selector you will not find anything for this there is a separate specification for the dom which defines what all of these methods and properties are supposed to do so if i search for here the qd selector the behavior is defined that what the query selector is supposed to return when we execute also the specification is not specific to the browsers so anyone can go and write the programs or libraries which uses the html and parses the dom based on the specification listed here you can read more about the dom api and the available methods in the mdn docs so for example if i search for here query selector inside that we can find the details about it and also the examples to understand the behavior of these Okay, now that we have covered the DOM, let's look at the Shadow DOM. Shadow DOM is the relatively new DOM feature that allows you to create custom components. Let's have a look at an example to understand this better. Here I've added a video element to our HTML page. And now if I open the browser and play the video, our video is playing. And we have a couple of buttons here, the play and pause buttons. We have the speaker icon, we have the menu and so on. But if I inspect our video element and look at the dev tools, we don't see any of the buttons here or the speaker or all of these menu items here. So how is it working? This video component is a custom component built by the chrome using the shadow dom the chrome doesn't show the shadow dom by default but we can enable it from the settings so if i go here and enable the user agent shadow dom and now if i go back to the video tag and click this we have the shadow root inside that we have all our items so now i can inspect the play button and this is here and all the css is here and so on the shadow dom allows us to create the subtree of dom inside some dom element you can also write some javascript in it so for example if i play this video Video, you see that we have a bunch of manipulations in our subtree using the javascript and all this functionality is hidden from the client so we don't have to worry about it so chrome is doing it in this web component by itself using the shadow dom so this parent component is called shadow host and inside that we have the shadow component another benefit of using the shadow dom or the custom components is that our css in the application or the page doesn't affect the css or the shadow dom let's say that i want to make all the divs to be background blue so this will not affect any of the nested elements that we have inside our shadow dom and same for the shadow dom component so any css that you have inside the shadow root this will not leak out to the outer elements custom components and shadow dom is supported in almost all the major browsers except the ie 11 where we can use this polyfills to make them work in the ie 11 as well we're not going to create any custom components or web components in this lesson but if you're interested in that feel free to comment below and we'll do that in the later lessons maybe the last item that we're going to cover in this lesson is the virtual DOM. In the modern front-end development, most of the applications that are being built these days are JavaScript heavy. So there are a lot of features like the data binding. So whenever the values in the variables are changed, they are automatically reflected in the browser. And there are other features like the handlers, animation, and there are hundreds and hundreds of components. The problem with all of this is if you do the changes into the browser immediately on the change of the variables, so this is going to slow down the application because DOM 
manipulations the tree manipulations are heavy so what most of the frameworks they do is they create a virtual dom which is the abstraction on top of the existing dom and then they do the manipulations on the virtual dom in the memory or the abstraction that they have available on top of the dom and then they decide when they are going to do the changes into the actual dom whenever it is suitable react.js is one of the frameworks which uses the internal virtual dom so if you look at the docs they say that react implements a browser independent dom system for performance and cross browser compatibility they also have a couple of differences from the actual dom so for example if you look at the attributes they have the camel case variables and also the event handlers they behave a bit differently and so on and that wraps up our lesson if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below and i will see you in the next lesson